Surprisingly, perhaps, the best light source for capturing every fine detail in stained glass is a cloudy day. Contrast is reduced. It is also easier to balance the exposure of a bright window with the much darker interior of the church. The sunny day has its place, the projected rays from the windows adding their own touch of magic. You can probably get away with a tripod in a country church, but not a cathedral. Anyway, and quite deceptively, there is so much light passing through a window that hand-holding the camera should not be a great problem, even without the luxury of an image stabilizer. Nevertheless, most of my shots are taken with the Olympus E-M1 Mark II and the 12-100 Pro lens, both of which have image stabilizers. On occasions, I have resorted to other lenses and camera bodies too. Capturing important detail even on a dull day requires a special technique. The sun was out to play when I visited St. Mary's Church, Fairford in Gloucestershire, famous for its extensive collection of medieval windows. With a general shot, I had difficulty in balancing the exposure of the small windows up there to the right, even though the main window looks okay. Going in closer to this window, known as the Devil's Window, if I don't spot meter, I get blown out highlights that are difficult to correct. But spot meter on those highlights, and then lighten the dark areas in post-production, tone and colour are then restored. The second photograph was properly taken on a different day, therefore the exterior lighting will also have been different. Now this is a technique I practice for most of my photography, as blown-out highlights are more difficult to correct than underexposure. Photographers more interested in numbers and statistics may shake their heads, but in my defence, I give you some pictures instead. This detail of the west window in Fairford Church shows why it has earned the nickname Devil's Window, and I am wondering who it reminds me of. If you are particularly interested in medieval glass, then head for Canterbury Cathedral. Recent research suggests that some of the glass is older than at first thought, dating back to the 12th century, therefore some of the oldest in the world. Some show Thomas Becket, who was murdered within the cathedral in 1170. King's College Chapel at Cambridge also has a fine collection of medieval stained glass, and photography is now permitted inside this great building. With most windows positioned above eye level, some creative angles are possible. But what does the photographer do if a faithful and accurate record is required without any optical distortion? One answer is to stand further back and use a telephoto lens. 
This reduces the angle of tilt, lessening the convergence of uprights. Of course, this is conditional that there is nothing in between and that a tripod can be used to reduce camera shake. However, this was handheld with, yes, you've guessed it, the Olympus E-M1 Mark II and the 12-100 to Pro lens, and you know the rest, but has it worked? I was also able to correct the convergence in Adobe Lightroom, which would not be possible with the shot nearer to the window. As mentioned earlier, handling the dynamic range is challenging. Rain or shine outside. I prefer to work with a single image. Spot metering close to a highlight, save to raw, and then correct in Lightroom. Some photographers will find these changes eye-watering, but they are founded upon many years' experience that has become second nature. What matters in the end is the result, however achieved, and of course I am aware of other techniques. A huge benefit of photography is to bring the world closer to an audience. Where a stained glass window is accessible, the enormous detail in their creation can be captured close up and presented in a manner that cannot be viewed at normal distance. As a matter of interest, I was standing on a pew to take this shot, but I did remember to take my shoes off first. Much of my stained glass window photography is for commercial purposes, where accuracy is demanded. But, on a shoot, I like to point the camera in the other direction now and again, for that more artistic effect. To conclude, here are a few.